I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible. I'm very highly educated. I know words, I have the best words. I have the best, but there's no better word than stupid. I've said that if Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her, you know? <laughs> Okay, you ready? Who's gonna pay for the wall? I'm not gonna pay for that fucking wall. Uh, I don't know what I said, uh, I don't remember. He's going like, I don't remember, I go, oh, baby, that Get him out, try not to hurt him. If you do, I'll defend you in court, don't worry about it. Now suddenly, he is resonating. He is resonating with the people and he's speaking our minds. Light the motherfucker on fire! They said you're a scumbag, uh -huh. you're a child pedophile, uh -huh. faggot bitches uh -huh. that turn into terrorists. Oh. Well, I think that this election is different in elections in the past, in the extreme polarization uh, of the voting public, you know, I think that that in a way it's a a logical buildup from what has happened in the past. That really, there's been an increase in the in the right becoming more way far to the right, and I think in this election you actually see the left becoming further to the left as well. I think with past elections, it's more been about um, getting a president who can you uh, do what's right for this country uh, and make the right decisions and help this country um, flourish. But now it almost seems like. People are trying to prove that they're right and not not really thinking for the better of the country, but thinking like, oh, well, my guy's better than your guy, and that's why he's going to be president. And it doesn't really matter what he's saying. It's just matter that he's saying it enough that he gets enough people to vote for him. Um, I think this year's election has completely divided the country. Um, it's not just... Republicans versus Democrats, it's turning into blacks versus whites versus Mexicans versus everyone else, and it's disgusting. Like, instead of standing together, we're separating even more than we were already separated before. Uh, I think this election is pretty interesting. The candidates are interesting, to say the least. Um, I'm not too big of a fan of Donald Trump. I'm not really a fan of the Republican Party. I'm more along, you know, the lines of um, Bernie, feel the burn. Um, the reason why is because he touches on a lot of um, issues that relate to my generation in particular. I feel that no matter which candidate wins this election, we as American people lose. Um, I think that at the end of the day, all the candidates have their flaws and they're all so either left or right or black and white or Republican and Democrat that at the end of the day, you're just not going to get a lot of positive results for the people that they're supposed to represent out of whoever gets elected. If you're an African first, go back to Africa! If you're an African first, go back to Africa! Go back to Europe! I think that the violence that takes place at the Trump rallies is at the same time a reflection of a very dark side of our society, a, a reflection of anger that people have and it's very much misplaced and misdirected anger. And again, I think that that anger is misplaced and misdirected very much because of uh, entities like Fox News. Um, so I think it reflects what's already out there and it's giving people permission to, to really be violent and angry. Um, but at the same time, I do think that Mr. Trump is fanning those flames. I think it really stems from all of the police shootings that have been going on. Um, and, and really just the race problem that we've had since, you know, the 1800s when, or the 1700s, just forever. Um, all starting from that and these people that just feel super sensitive because 
you know, one comment comes out a certain way and then it keeps stemming and getting bigger and bigger and then all of a sudden we have white cops shooting black cops and, and it's turning into a white versus black thing and then Trump comes in and he wants to put up a wall from, from Mexico, like blocking Mexico and now all of a sudden he doesn't like Mexicans or Hispanics or anything like that. And it's turning into whites versus some versus blacks versus Hispanics or blacks versus Asians or and that's what it's turning into. I think the big problem this country has is being politically correct. Just to be politically correct just takes too much time. It takes too much effort. Here's the problem with political correctness. It takes too long. We don't have time. We don't have time. Yeah, I have heard some uh, Trump supporters and even some people in the news media say that uh, part of Trump's popularity is based on the fact that people are sick of being politically correct. Um, for me, I think you really need to examine that phrase, politically correct. What does it really mean? Um, when I see Mr. Trump making fun of a person with a disability, and doing it blatantly. That's not politically, to not make fun of someone with a disability isn't political correctness. That's just being a decent and good human being. To not uh, completely objectify women is not being politically, that's not being politically correct. That's being a decent and enlightened human being. Mr. Trump steadfastly reduces women to their body parts. He is the, the height of objectifying women. I've heard him make comments, these are very old comments, it was when uh, the, the daughter he had with Marla Maples, the woman that he cheated on his first wife with, and just his behavior with his wife says a lot about the way he treats women and thinks about women too. Um, he seems to think wives, you trade them in for a newer model, kind of like a car. Um, but when he, when he was interviewed, I saw a clip of this, that he was interviewed a very long time ago on the, the TV show Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. And the baby that he had with the Ms. Maples was a brand new baby. And the person who was the host of the TV show asked Mr. Trump, what did the baby get from you? And what did the baby get from Marla? Well, I think that she's got a lot of Marla. She's really a beautiful baby. And she's, uh, she's, got, um, she's got Marla's legs. <laughs> we don't know whether or not she's got this part yet. I was so struck by that comment because that was a baby, that was an infant, and to talk about an infant's legs being like her mother's great legs is just really troubling, and it just shows how much he really does reduce women to a collection of body parts that suit or don't suit his needs um, or his desires. Um, the comments that he's made, I mean, you could just go back, the comments that he made about Megyn Kelly. One of the things people love about you is you speak your mind and you don't use a politician's filter. However, that is not without its downsides, in particular when it comes to women. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account Only has Rosie several... O'Donnell. No, it wasn't. For the record, it was well beyond Rosie O'Donnell. Yes, I'm sure it was. Your Twitter account has several disparaging comments about women's looks. You once told a contestant on Celebrity Apprentice it would be a pretty picture to see her on her knees. Does that sound to you like the temperament of a man we should elect as president? And how will you answer the charge from Hillary Clinton, who is likely to be the Democratic nominee, that you are part of the war on women? See, there was blood coming out of her eyes, uh, blood coming out of her wherever. Um, to not talk, to not insinuate that a reporter is, is having her period, that's not political correctness. That's that's just not being a, a complete misogynist pig, um, which I, in, in my opinion, Mr. Trump's behavior definitely puts him in that category. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. We have a terrible president who happens to be African-American. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. Based on his interviews and how he's been doing lately, I don't think he would accurately represent 
African American people or you know any minority. I mean, he I I really think he does what he does to get votes. So he'll say anything that he has to say to get the right vote. I feel that when he when Trump. Uh, you know, announced his candidacy, um, people thought it was crazy. They're like, oh my God, Trump's running for president. And everyone laughed and made a bunch of internet jokes. And they still are doing that, even though he very well could be the next president of the United States, which is a terrifying thought. Let's make America great again. We are going to make America great again. I think the slogan, Make America Great Again, is playing on a, a long ago that, that never really existed. Or if it did exist, I wonder what point in time he really thought America was great. Uh, in my opinion, America is great. We have problems, and we have to deal with those problems. Um, but I think a lot of people, it's part of human nature to some degree to kind of look back with nostalgia at times long ago and think, oh, those were the good old days. That's why there's a saying, the good old days, because everybody thinks of it in those terms. But even during times when we experienced really unprecedented economic boom times, like in the 50s when everybody came back from World War II, we still weren't perfect. So he might be talking about that period when he talks about making America great again, but to a lot of the people who were oppressed and a lot of the people who were you know, uh, the fact that we did not have civil rights in play, place back then. And for a lot of people, America was not great back then. And I think that it was, uh, it was great for if you were straight, white, and Christian. But if you deviated that from that, uh, you know, in any way, shape, or form, uh, you, you might have a very different opinion of whether or not America was great. I personally am planning to vote for Trump in the November election. Um, him versus the other you know, Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, he completely gets my vote. I, of course, don't agree with some of the remarks that he makes, um, but I think his tax play on his foreign policy and all that he plans to do in his presidency is superior to the others. Um, I support how he feels about overseas, putting um, Americans back into overseas, trying to fight ISIS instead of standing by and letting them behead even more Americans. He's planning on doing something about it and that's what I like. I mean, it's pretty disgusting that he said that his daughter is attractive, but I mean, we've all said things that, you know, I, I'm one of those people that says things that come out the wrong way, and I'm not making excuses for him because that's disgusting, but it's, that's just the name of the game. We all say things. Trump says all the things that we're thinking in our head, like, well, we don't like illegal immigrants, let's put up a wall. We have to start by building a wall, a big, beautiful, powerful wall. I think if Trump wins the presidency, it would be disastrous for America um, from a foreign policy perspective. We already hear, uh, you know, I listen to the BBC news. I like to get my news from a lot of different sources. Um, and I like to hear news sources that are from overseas, you know what I mean, that are from other countries. Um, we are definitely... The fact that he's even popular, that he even might become the president, is already having people look at us in a very negative light. America's pretty darn great right now. America's moving forward right now. The American people should be proud of what we achieved together right now. I continue to believe Mr. Trump will not be president. Donald Trump is a racist and an opportunist. Donald Trump is mad. Like they've scared stiff. Worried about what's going to happen. Terrified? Very scary. Very scared. I don't know. <laughs> it looks a little bit bizarre. We will make America great again. We will start winning again. You will be so proud of this country very, very soon. Thank you all. Thank you very much.